Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 17 of the chapter Chemical Bonding and Molecular Structure. We were doing hybridization and now we are going to find out the hybridization of all the atoms in these compounds. Please refer to my previous two videos to know about hybridization and we will move on with these steps now. The first example that I have taken here is carbon dioxide. How do we find out the hybridization of carbon and oxygens in carbon dioxide? If you take a look at the electronic configuration of carbon in the excited state, it is 1s2, 2s1 and 2p3, right? One electron from 2s2, it jumps up to 2p, from 2s it jumps up to 2p to make four orbitals available for uh, bonding. But carbon, in carbon, if you notice here, the two bonds on both the sides with the oxygens, carbon has double bonds. And we know whenever there is a double bond or a multiple bond, one of those bonds is a sigma bond and the other, the remaining are pi bonds. Right? This is what we did here, that whenever you have multiple bonds, one of them is a sigma bond and the remaining are pi and it is only the sigma bond that participates in uh, hybridization. So what do we notice here? That both on both the sides you have one sigma and one pi bond. So two of these orbitals here, they are reserved and you remember that pi bonds are formed only by p orbitals. So two of these p orbitals are reserved for pi bonding, right? They are reserved for pi bonding and one of the s and one p, they get together and they get hybridized. So what is the hybridization that would be available here? It would be sp hybridize, uh, hybridization. And another way to find out is what, is what are the regions of density? Count the regions of density around carbon. Carbon has every single double, triple bond or a lone pair is a region of density. So what do we have on the two sides of carbon? Two double bonds. So this is one region of density. This is the second region of density. When you have two regions of density, the hybridization is sp. So carbon here shows sp hybridization. Right? Now let us come to the oxygens. Oxygen here has two lone pairs and one double bond. The, whether it's a double bond, single bond or triple bond, for the purpose of hybridization, we have to take it as one sigma bond. We only have to count the sigma bonds. So we are counting sigma bonds and the lone pairs of electrons. So how many do we have total regions of uh, electron density? One, two, three. And when you have three regions of electron density, the hybridization is sp2. So oxygen is sp2 hybridized. Here also the oxygen is sp2 hybridized. That is how we find out what is the hybridization of elements. Now in this molecule of nitrogen, nitrogen has one lone pair and one triple bond. Out of this triple bond only one is a sigma bond, therefore we count it as one region of density, two regions of density. What would the uh, hybridization of nitrogen be? sp and this nitrogen is also sp. And whenever you have sp hybridization, the shape around that atom, what is the shape around that atom? It is linear. So around carbon, carbon dioxide is a linear molecule and the sp2 hybridization of oxygen has one bond only with carbon but the other two sp2 uh, or two orbitals, hybridized orbitals are along the corners of a triangle but since they are lone pairs they do not contribute to the shape of the molecule. So the terminal lone pairs they are not really participating or extending the structure in any form. Now let us look at the next molecule that is ozone. In ozone we have three oxygens and if you really notice the three oxygens are different. Let's take the central oxygen. It has one lone pair and two bonds on the two sides, right? One is a single bond and one, two sigma bonds on two sides I should say. So what are the three? It has three regions of uh, density, electron density. So one, two, three, the hybridization would be sp2. One s orbital, two p orbitals, three orbitals. Look at this oxygen. It has one, two, three. Therefore, this oxygen should also be sp2 hybridized. Right? And how about this one now? It has one, two, three, and four regions of electron density. Three lone pairs and one sigma bond. Therefore, this would be sp3 hybridized. Am I clear? And 
sp3 hybridized should be a tetrahedral and sp2 and sp2 it is the central atom sp2 means it should be uh, it, it should be pointed the three uh, electron pairs should be pointed to uh, the three corners of a regular triangle but since this is a lone pair the molecule will appear to be angular the lone pairs do not contribute to the structure so you will what you will see would be a an angular molecule let us now come to formaldehyde right hcho look at this now the carbon here what would be the hybridization of carbon carbon one two three it has three sigma bonds so and it is do you see the molecule it's along the three corners of a triangle so this is sp2 hybridized hydrogen never participates in hybridization because for hybridization you need at least two orbitals which are at least uh, half occupied half filled and hydrogen has only one electron in one orbital oxygen on the other hand too has two lone pairs and one sigma bond here in the double bond therefore this is also sp2 hybridized three regions of electron density sp2 hybridized let us now come to ethene the ethene molecule uh, the hydrogens do not participate in uh, in hybridization so we have to see the hybridization of the carbons carbon has one two three regions of electron density therefore it will be sp2 remember the pi bond is always the p orbital which did not participate in hybridization so this is again sp2 come here this is uh, this carbon here has a triple bond single bond which means two regions of electron density sp hybridized sp hybridized now about the structures if you see the sp2 hybridized you will notice that one hybridized orbital com comes here and it forms with head on collision with the other carbon it forms a sigma bond between the two carbons and the other two sp2 hybridized orbitals they form sigma bonds with the two hydrogens and if you notice this from the center this is a triangular planar structure here and a triangular planar structure here do you notice this so we notice that we actually and what is the what is triangular planar structure what hybridization does it indicate it indicates sp2 hybridization and sp hybridization should be linear and we find that this molecule is linear but in uh, if you try to um, actually view the bonding it has one sigma bond which is formed by the head on uh, overlap of the sp hybridized orbital there are two sp hybridized sp means two orbitals atomic orbitals hybridized to form two hybridized sp orbitals so each carbon has two of those one it uses to form a sigma bond with the adjacent carbon and one sp hybridized orbital it uses to form a sigma bond with hydrogen and the two other two p orbitals which did not participate in hybridization like it happened here those two are used to make uh, they are if we assume that this was the internuclear axis is about the uh, um, is not px or py then it uh, these two would be aligned along px and py and we know the sideways overlap cause forms regions of electrons around space between the two atoms like this so if one of these is along the let us say y axis the other would be along x axis so you would see one a lobe of electron density on top one in, uh, in the bottom and for the third bond one in front and one behind the blackboard so it would appear uh, like a cylinder that the sigma bond is in the middle then there's one lobe of electron density on top one on bottom one in front and one in, one behind it so you would on the whole it would appear like a cylindrical molecule that there are four lobes one in front one behind and a single sigma bond which is between them so this is what we know about the hybridization of these molecules let us now do a few more examples let us now find out the hybridization of all the atoms in this molecule if you see here if we start with oxygen here oxygen has two lone pairs and two sigma bonds so how many areas of electron density does it have one two three four four means there are four orbitals s 1s and 3p so it will be sp3 hybridized carbon is forming how many areas of electron density 1 2 3 therefore this one would be 
sp2 how about this it has only two regions of electron density three and one bond triple bond and single bond which means one sigma here and one sigma here so uh, this would be sp hybridized this also has two areas of density so it is sp hybridized how about this one one two three so it is sp2 hybridized so do you see all you have to do is find out the regions of electron density and you would be able to identify the the hybridization now we have done only hybridizations which are up to four i have not yet taught you about five and six I will do this in the next video, but before I do that, there were two questions in the NCRT uh, exercise which I found very interesting and I thought I should discuss those first. Question number 4.25 in your NCRT textbook exercise is that you have to describe the change in hybridization of aluminum in this particular reaction. AlCl3 combines with Cl negative, the chloride ion, to form AlCl4 negative. So let us see what happens to the hybridization in this. Aluminum is the 13th element, right? It has three electrons in its outermost shell. So let us just write AlCl3 is turning into AlCl4, AlCl4 negative. So if I would make a structure, I mean, let us first write the electronic configuration of aluminum. Aluminum is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 that makes it 10, 3s2 and 3p1. If I make it according to this, uh, just the valence orbitals, this is 3s2 and 3p1. Right? In the excited state, one electron would jump up to 3p. So we have 3s1 and 3p2 in the excited state. And three orbitals now. 1s and 2p orbitals would hybridize in AlCl3 to give us three hybridized orbitals. So what would the structure of AlCl3 be like? It will be Al, Cl, Cl and Cl. So aluminum here is forming three bonds. It is sp2 hybridized and the structure would be triangular planar. Now in AlCl4, what would the structure be like? Al is here, chlorine is here, one chlorine here, one chlorine here and one chlorine here and the entire structure has a negative charge. We know since there is, chlorine has seven electrons in its outermost shell and this entire ion has one negative charge which means one more electron is present to the system. So let us say that this electron enters here and now aluminum uses the third p orbital also in hybridization and now it has four hybridized orbitals to form AlCl4 negative. So in AlCl4 negative, if you notice, Al should have sp3 hybridization and the molecule or the ion should have tetrahedral geometry. Right? Interesting? So in this reaction, the hybridization of aluminum changes from sp2 to sp3. The next question in the exercise is that you have to find, you have to comment on the hybridization of boron and nitrogen in this particular reaction. Let us again do this. Take the example of boron and nitrogen. Let us first take the individual compounds. BF3 and NH3. Boron uh, is the fifth element, right? So it has five ele electrons, 1s2, 2s2, and 2p has one electron, right? It has five electrons. So in the excited state, we'd expect this one electron to go up here. And in BF3, there are three fluorines, so three sigma bonds. So what would the what are the areas of uh, electron density? There are three sigma bonds, therefore the hybridization, as you can see from here also, 1s and 2p orbitals, it would be sp2. So in BF3, the hybridization of boron is sp2. In NH3, N has one lone pair. Now nitrogen has five electrons, right? So one, two, three, four. Now this is the configuration of nitrogen. So nitrogen, when in ammonia, it has one lone pair and three bonds with the three hydrogens. The geometry should be tetrahedral basically, but since the lone pair does not contribute to the geometry, the molecule would appear to be trigonal pyramidal. 
right? And what is the hybridization here? One S orbital because what uh, hybridizes all lone pairs in the valence shell and all uh, the sigma bonds. So you have lone pair and three sigma bonds. So the hybridization of nitrogen and ammonia is sp3, right? Now when F3B, now we have boron with three fluorine atoms and nitrogen which had a lone pair of electrons with three hydrogens when these two combine together what happens this lone pair of electrons is used to form a bond just like we had the negative one negative elect one electron extra which helped us to form the bond with alumina now the lone pair of electrons acts as a covalent or a sigma bond between boron and nitrogen such a bonding is known as coordinate bonding. So now, what do we see here? Although boron did not have the electron uh, in its outermost shell, but due to the contribution of the pair of electrons from nitrogen, now in what is a coordinate bond? A coordinate bond is one in which one of the atoms contributes both the electrons, the pair of electrons for covalent bonding, and the bond that is formed after uh, the bond is formed it behaves absolutely like a covalent bond so basically a covalent bond what is a covalent bond when both the atoms contribute one electron each and thus uh, and they share this pair of electrons and coordinate bond is when the contribution is not by both atoms but by one atom but the pair of electrons is shared equally by both the atoms after the bonding so now boron what is the number of uh, regions of electron around boron now it is 4, so the hybridization is sp3 and nitrogen was already sp3, it remains sp3, right? So this was about hybridization that is sp, sp2 and sp3 hybridization. In the next video, I'm going to discuss the hybridization involving d orbitals too. There are not too much details in your syllabus, but we will, uh, I will cover up a little bit about this. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Recommend it to all your friends. Help me spread word to all your friends who need help in chemistry. And please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you and bye-bye for now.